Pretty good timing. Yeah, I'd say. Would you like that round? Thank you. 
Ford, Eddie Atlas with you here on Friday Night Fight. Jason Adams was able to do some inside work to the body in that eighth round. His trainer says, don't worry about getting tired here down the stretch. Easy for him to say, sitting on a stool when it's in the high 90s. The punches through round number eight. You see, Adams has landed more. Rodriguez has thrown more. Teddy scorecard, 78-74, Rodriguez. He wants to know if he just takes a little break. Doesn't move those hands. And a little energy, buddy. Adam, the crutchy little son of a gun, gets still around once in a while. Always trying. Pressing forward, connects with a right hand. In the eyes of the judges, Teddy, will the aggression serve Jason Adams well in some of these rounds that you think are tight? I don't think it's going to wind up being tight here. I think the effect of punching. It's going to be clear that it was Rodriguez. I think the rounds that Rodriguez won were so clear. They stand out. Those offensive opportunities are always there. But they're not taking advantage of That's just what it is. He's just not taking advantage of them. It's not that they disappear. It's not that Adams all of a sudden comes up with a new defensive wrinkle. The opportunities are always there for Rodriguez to get the better of him. Adams, the shorter man, that's his son of a gun. But he has to come from too far away, and he shows. He exposes himself. And Rodriguez is able to get to him before Adams can get into his range. Bad. I'll call you when you're bad, but I'll also say it on the other side of it too. Uh -oh. People can people cannot like me, and they can say whatever they want, which I really, frankly, I don't really care. But I say what I believe, you know, either side. And when I think that a guy deserves to be said something that way, I'll say it. Come on, let's go, Eric. Bottom right hand corner. This is what you call hot. This is what you call closing the show. Both men getting up against the ropes, having at it. Tenth and final round, Jason Adams from Edmonton against the unbeaten hometown kid, Eric Rodriguez, as a chain of Eric Eric goes up at Sunset Station in San Antonio. Through eight rounds, boy, razor thin in terms of coffee box punch stats. There were 176 punches thrown in that last round. And folks, keep in mind, when this telecast started, it was 100 degrees. The heart of Adam and his corner watering him down, trying to keep his body temperature down, making sure he's, he has been drinking water, has kept him in his fight. Rodriguez now. Good combination against the Royals. So far away to be close. 
there's a lot of payment to be paid. And that payment is in punches he takes to get close. And even when he gets close, he doesn't necessarily get the better of it. He's short on that reading. He's been able to hold him to the body. And even though Rodriguez has those long arms, his punches are a little shorter. Adams has some good spots here. And a good left hand comes back with it, this Jason Adams. Rodriguez by surprise here. Boy, when you have heart like Adams, you never have to completely. Too bad he doesn't have power. It's unorthodox style, Adams, that is. This round is paid some dividends for him. He's throwing punches from angles that have caught Rodriguez magic. But he didn't have the power to really take it to the next point. And at this point in the fight, he's so far behind, he needs that power. I believe at least to get Rodriguez out of there. Not just have him out. Some of those punches Adams threw earlier that caught Rodriguez by surprise. Never mention that Vinny Pazienza used to throw those kind of punches. Catch you different angles you never expected. Nice fight here tonight. Nice fight. Only kidding. What a great way to start off your weekend on Friday Night Fights. San Antonio Station. They are looking for a win from their hometown favorite, Eric Rodriguez. He has 11. He wants the complete dozen. We will find out if he got it when we come back. Yeah. Okay. What am I seeing in the background? Okay. crazy over their spurs, but tonight they were loving the fight scene. Total punches through 10 rounds. Jason Adams throwing nine more than Eric Rodriguez. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 97-93 in favor of the unbeaten prospect from here in San Antonio. As for the official word, we head up to the ring to Tom Garcia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the cards for this incredible fight. Judge Ray Hawkins scores the bout 98-92. Judge Rick Crocker scores the bout 97-93. And Judge Joel Elizondo scores the bout 97-93. For your new WBC Youth World Champion, Eric Rodriguez. So Eric Rodriguez 
picks up a trinket in front of his hometown crowd. He is now 12-0-1. We have more Friday night fights from San Antonio to come your way. But for now, we check in with Brian. And is that Max Fonzarelli? Champ Francisco Teodor. Here is Eric Rodriguez. We got a good look at him this past spring. Five foot five, 22 year old. He is now 13 0 and 1 with six knockouts. His opponent is 36 year old Francisco Teodor. Back in 1995, he won the IBF 112 pound belt. He is 43 17 and 1 with 31 KOs. All right, guys, this is the six round fight. I want you to watch the elbows, the headbutts. When I say stop boxing, I want you to stop boxing and take one step back. No hitting on the break. Any questions? Good luck. Jerry Lagarde is the third man inside, scheduled six rounder. Francisco Teodor, Teddy, has lost six straight, and he is some 13 pounds north of where he was in his prime. He's been knocked out his last two fights. Lost six straight, lost 12 of his last 15. Turned pro at 108 pounds, has fought at 112 pounds. His last three years moved up to bantamweight, and now featherweight. His last fight actually was 122 pounds. This is his heaviest weight, as you just alluded to, tonight of his career. 125 pounds. Before that, he had never been over 122. Eric Rodriguez was on Friday Night Fights back in May of this past year. It was a pretty entertaining 10-round win that he earned over Jason the Troll Adams. You remember that fight, Rodriguez was able to bust him up pretty good. But Adams hung in there real tough and went the distance with the unbeaten Texan. One good thing for Teodor Tejada is that even though he shot one, obviously, at 36 years of age, having lost his last six fights. He has plenty of experience. The thing that you worry about is his legs, his ability to take, but he's in there with Rodriguez, who's not a banger. Rodriguez lands a left hand at the end of that exchange, digs to the body against the ropes. We apologize for the technical difficulties as you don't see the round clock that you typically see during all our fights. Working on that for you. Rodriguez continues to press forward. Again, Teodoro hoping that he can use his experience and not have to worry about the one thing that a 36-year-old would have to worry about. Sudden blackout, sudden short-circuiting because of the power of his young opponent. Rodriguez, two of his last three fights were very close to this decision. A majority and a split. That's what happens when you're not a big puncher. You don't have that power to separate yourself. Teodor won the IBF 112-pound crown from Jose Zapata. That was back in 1995. In 96, Mark Johnson was able to knock him out in the first round. Most recently, he was in in June 2002 with Hugo D'Anzo. That was the start of the current six straight losses. Nothing fancy coming from Rodriguez. Pressing the fight. Pushing, trying to get in close. Last moments here of this round. Once again, we apologize for the technical difficulties with the round clocks. Every once in a while, Last Rodriguez laying here. off a little bit. That's exactly what an old-timer like Teodoro would want. Chance to get a break. Pick his pace. Thursday night fights are back. Seven scheduled bouts of San Antonio's finest battled it out, including the women. January 22nd, 7.30 p.m. at Grand Central Station. Brought to you by Grand Casino Cushada, Stacy Sports Bar, and News 9 San Antonio. Ringside and reserve seats are on sale now at Grand Central Station. Order your tickets by phone at 385-8810 or visit us at alamoboxing.com with special ringside announcer, Mark Beto. Thursday night fights are back. 
Now you can get the best of digital television and the best of the internet together at great savings. Save on Time Warner Digital Cable with exclusive features like eye control movies that you start and stop instantly right on your TV. Save on Roadrunner High Speed Online, the connection that's up to 75 times faster than dial-up and up to twice as fast as DSL standard package. Time to call now and save big on both. It's easy, just one phone call to one company. Time Warner Cable, now anything's possible. Friday night fights from the Minneapolis Convention Center. Sam Gar and St. Paul's undefeated fighter Matt Vanda still to come in our main event. See the punches in round one between Francisco Teodor and Eric Rodriguez. 21 of Rodriguez's 22 connects were power shots in that first round. Four for two fights for the young Rodriguez. I've been in his home state of Texas. Teodoro, most of his fights have come in his home country of Colombia. See a small cut over the left eye of the young Eric Rodriguez as Teodoro keeps his aggression here in the first minute of round number two. Right hand comes in from Eric. As I alluded to earlier, this could be a good spot, believe it or not, for Teodor, even though he's lost his last six in a row. We've talked about last 12 of his last 15 to knock out his last two. He's in there with a young guy. He can use his experience. And he's in there with a young guy who's not a big banger. Teodor's been knocked out eight times, so if he doesn't have to worry about the power, his experience can really be brought to the front door. And right now, he's using it this round pretty well, picking his spots. Brains in a body shot, and a right hand comes in from Rodriguez. Right now, Rodriguez is still helping the experienced Teodoro. Teodoro is an older guy. He wants a controlled pace. He doesn't want the young bull, the young lion, working when he's inside. So far, Rodriguez has not worked enough when he's gotten inside, has not gone to the body enough, has let himself be tied up, has let the pace have breaks in it. That's what an old-timer wants, breaks in a pace. Teodoro like an old car. You don't take it on the highway and make it go 80 miles an hour, it can still chug along at 40. Right now, Rodriguez trying to get it on the highway, trying to step it up to 60, 70 miles an hour. First time he's done this. And you can see he's having a little success. Jerry Lagarde is going to address the mouthpiece that dropped out. The old timer, he's not unhappy with a little break here. Box. Now here, try to get it back in control again. Try to kill a little time by keeping distance. Look how he stays outside. Moves away a little bit. And the young guy, Rodriguez, that's where he wants to be inside, but he's got to keep his hands free. The Tigers' night in New Orleans was sweet as sugar. Now, Sports Illustrated honors the BCS national champion LSU Tigers with a fantastic national championship package, free with your paid subscription. Start out with a special Sports Illustrated national championship hardbound collector's issue. It's a celebration of LSU football, a great way to remember the Tigers' run to number one. It's gold-lettered and individually numbered, a cherished keepsake you'll treasure forever. Call now and you'll also get this collectible Wilson Mini Football with a Sugar Bowl and LSU logo. Available exclusively from Sports Illustrated. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. Save more than 50% off the cover price. When you use your credit card, you'll also get this collectible mini helmet by Shut Sports. Recognizing LSU's first national championship since 1958. Free. Celebrate the Tigers with three great gifts from Sports Illustrated. Call now. All the arguing about who should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, here's a guy ringside who many would say should be there. We're in Minneapolis, and of course, everybody here, a big fan of the three-time AL batting champion, Tony Oliva. It's interesting, Tony is sitting right behind former Cy Young Award winner Dean Chance, talking to Dean earlier, said, 
Joe, the toughest hitter I ever faced. He said Rod Carew got it done with his legs for another 30 points on the batting average, but Tony, he could flat out hit. I don't know, but a terrific hitter. Eric Rodriguez, Francisco Teodor. Round number three. It's the one thing you gotta love about the Baseball Hall of Fame, though. Not easy to get in there, and that's what the Hall of Fame's supposed to be about. Not the doors open just for anybody that was a good player. You have to be very special, Hall of Fame. Teddy's scorecard 20 to 18 for Rodriguez, but now in his third round, Eric Rodriguez is dealing with a bloody face. We saw the cut over the left eye develop in round number two. Now it appears that the right side is a concern. You touched on it earlier. Theodore, the smaller guy, turned pro at 108 pounds. Just the last couple of years, moved up to 122, the heaviest of his career tonight. Rodriguez, the bigger guy, turned pro. At bantamweight, last fight he was up to solid featherweight. Tonight, 124. But Rodriguez not using his strength and his better weight advantage really well. Not able to get close. Theodore using experience to keep distance. And when Rodriguez has gotten close, hasn't always been as consistent as I would think his corner would want him to be. We know that Rodriguez is not going to match Theodore as far as being wily. As far as being experienced, so he has to use that youth, that enthusiasm, that strength, and that means right there inside, he has to prolong those areas of punching, not get tied up. This is where Rodriguez must keep busy, keep his hands free, go to that body, take advantage of being the younger guy. And that's what he's doing here, Teddy. Good work on the inside. Put some more age on those 36-year-old legs of Theodore. Don't let him use them when you separate. That cut open again in the right corner of the eye of Rodriguez. Rodriguez experiencing things tonight in this fight. But if he gets through it, his people are going to hope it's going to help him grow, help him build on it. and cut, but keep pressing on. The That's the call to order from Eric Rodriguez. Point. Point for the head. With unlimited local and long-distance calling, you can show people how much you care all the time and never worry about the cost. The Neighborhood, built by MCI. Stay close to the ones you love. You've got something incredibly important to do. Where are you going to do it? With a laptop powered by Centrino, Intel's mobile technology, and a wireless-enabled home, you can connect to the world all over the house. Maybe even outside the house. Intel Centrino Mobile Technology. Well, there is the corner of Eric Rodriguez, the young, unbeaten prospect from San Antonio. They're working on cuts to both sides. The head was definitely a factor in that third round from Francisco Teodor and Jerry Lagarde deducted a point in the final seconds of that third round. So Teodor, who appears to be behind on the scorecards regardless, now finds himself with a potential 10-8 round in that third round. Six-round featherweight fight. Eric Rodriguez, the unbeaten prospect. He's 13-0 with six knockouts. He's wearing the black with silver. Francisco Teodor in the Colombian colored gold, red and blue. Former IDF flyweight champion. Well past his prime. Six